Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. Amen. Uh, like Pastor Tyner said at the beginning, we are going to be going through Jonah. Um, it's an exciting book. Uh, four little chapters. Uh, during this time, at least for me, uh, it's going to be kind of more of a Bible study kind of sermon. We're going to go through it text by text, word by word, and kind of see what we can pull out of it because there's so much packed into it. Um, today, we're going to do introduction and we're going to do the first four verses. N next week, we'll finish off chapter one. And then we've kind of got chapter two, chapter three, and four all lined out for the next couple Sunday. Um, with that, that means that you get to follow along. So I want you to open up a Bible. You can open up your phone app if you would like. Yes, you may use your phone. It's okay. Just no Facebooking. I know some of you. Uh, it's on your Pew Bible, page 774. Um, if you've got a favorite Bible that you use, this may be a month to bring it with you. If you want to highlight and mark as you go through it, uh, over the next couple of weeks, a uh, great time for this. And if the print is too small, I will have it up on the screen. But um, Jonah for me has always been a fascinating book uh, back in 2002, 2003. It was the first book um, I ever translated word for word from the Hebrew. Uh, I was taking Hebrew class, and towards the end of the semester, they said, well, let's take a chance and let's try to translate something. So I got to translate he, uh, Jonah all the way through. Uh, and it was an exciting to see how it, well, just how some of the nuances uh, in the Hebrew uh, has. Uh, Jonah, too often I think we just think it's a fish story. Um, but Jonah is much, much more. Uh, it's a story of grace. It's a story of love and compassion from our God. You know, uh, it'll echo uh, many other stories in the Bible. Uh, it'll echo uh, Noah's Ark, uh, how uh, God rescues his people, and Jonah will get rescued through the fish. It'll echo uh, the parting of the Red Sea and walking through with God's people being protected. Um, it echoes, um, well... How about Jesus' story? Uh, God himself being sent to people uh, who don't deserve his love and his mercy, and yet that's what he does. And uh, Jesus even uses it, right? He says, uh, just like Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, so too must the Son of Man be in the grave. You know, maybe that's even actually the best part. We know that uh, if Jesus is referencing it, it's got to be something true, right? I mean, it's not just some fable that's made up, but some truth uh, of how this actually happened. So let's get started here. Verse 1. Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Adam, saying... All right, we're just going to stop there. Look, I got four verses. I got to fill some time, right? <clears throat> the word of the Lord. You know, this phrase gets passed around through uh, the Old Testament all the time. Uh, how many times the prophets say, the, son, or the word of the Lord came to me, or uh, it talks about how the word spoke and something happened. Uh, God's voice does things. Uh, this word here for Lord, anytime we see Lord in, uh, when it's all caps, uh, very much it's uh, the very unique word for God, uh, Yahweh. Uh, this name comes uh, to 
the Hebrews the first time to Moses at the burning bush, and Moses asked God, who should I say that you are? And he says, I am who I am. And that little phrase uh, in Hebrew is Yahweh. The word of Yahweh came to Jonah. Now, you think about God's words and how they have power. In Genesis chapter 1, uh, God creates by using words. He speaks and things create. He speaks and things happen. You know, in our gospel reading just a little bit ago, um, God speaks and tells this dead child to get up and what happens? She gets up. God's voice. God's very utterance of words have power. They mean something. Now this even gets cooler. I want you to think John chapter 1. Starts off in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It was God. And then if you fast forward a little bit, it says, and the word became flesh. And that flesh is Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus came to Jonah. Now, it's not Jesus as we know it, but it's pre-incarnate, but Jesus' healing power comes to Jonah. It's in him, that message of hope and mercy, that he wants to go out. And he tells him, arise and go to Nineveh, the great city. Uh, now, when we say great city, um, it's not talking about like in great in the sense that it's the best city ever, right? I mean, we can all say getting is pretty great, right? I mean, we enjoy it, uh, but it's, we're pretty small. Right? Uh, when you're saying great, they're talking just huge. It's like saying you're going to Houston, right? I mean, it's just big. It takes you forever to get through it. Um, that's what they're talking about. And uh, let's just pause here. Nineveh is a important trade city. Uh, you wouldn't go there as a Jew. I mean, they were uh, Gentile, Gentile. They're, they're the outside. Uh, they're doing things you don't want to be a part of. Um, Nineveh itself is uh, located, uh, you know where Baghdad is? Uh, you just go north a little bit and you're right in that area, okay? So in Iraq. Uh, and that's where Nineveh, uh, well, it doesn't exist anymore, but that's, that's approximately the region. And God has a reason for it, right? He says, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. Now, this isn't just this evilness of like, oh, I started to pay attention, they got really evil, let's just kind of look at them. Uh, they've been doing some things they shouldn't be doing for a while. But in the Hebrew here, it's got this sense of evilness that comes up before me like a smell. Have you ever been in a place uh, where it just rank and you just, you almost wanted to get grossed out because of it, right? Uh, maybe it's walking through a trash can or area. Uh, maybe it's uh, changing a dirty diaper. Maybe it's, uh, maybe you've been to a landfill, right? Um, and you walk by it and that just, that odor comes up and just fills your nostrils and you're like, ugh, right? This is what the Hebrews say. Their evilness has come up and just permeated and came wafting up to God and he's seeing it. He's smelling it. And he's got to do something about it. Now, no good 
Jewish person would want to go to Nineveh. This is going to be part of Jonah's dilemma. He doesn't want to go. Uh, we'll see here in the next verse, right? He runs away. Um, he's struggling with going. And one of his biggest struggles that he'll go, he tells us in chapter 4, he says, I know you're a God of mercy and grace, and those people just really don't deserve it. I know if I go and share the message and the promise that you will have kindness on them. He knows that the message he's sending is not one of destruction, but one of hope, one of mercy, one that will change the world. And he can't take it. Now, uh, how many of you know there's a big celebration coming up this week? Good. For y'all that don't know, 4th of July is on Wednesday. <sighs> I'm hopefully you guys were just falling asleep and not paying attention, right? How many of you, I'm going to just ask this, well, okay, what's the point of the 4th of July? Independence Day. What is the big event that happened on 4th of July that made us independent? Ooh, not very good. Signing of Declaration of Independence. Somebody said it over here. Oh, good. Marsha. No. Somebody in the back. Yeah. De signing of the Declaration of Independence. How many of you actually read the Declaration of Independence? I read it this week. It was a long time ago. I... Ah. Is that a message of hope or, or destruction? I was shocked. I, I think so often we think of it as this great list of things that the king did wrong. Believe me, it did. It's got those in there. But it, I was actually shocked that first section, it's a section of hope. It talks about how uh, we can have, we want to have religious freedom talks about hope and an understanding that all men are created equal. You know, for them, they're talking about they want to make sure that there's not lords that are higher up the food chain and these little peasants, see, they want to bring it down. It'll also become a hope of understanding that uh, men, women, there's an, all men are created equal, whether it be race, gender, all these things. It's a message of hope. It talks about a pursuit of happiness and not oppression. How often we make that message a, a negative one. But yet, our, our message and what we're founded on, our country, is one of hope. It's a great news. I think that's what Jonah struggled with here. Um, at least I, for me thinking about it, so often don't we focus on all the negative things? You know, Jonah must have been thinking in his head, the Ninevites have all this list of bad things, let me go through them. Please Make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing right. But that's not the message that he's sent with, right? He's going to be sent with a message, repent, be forgiven. It's a message of hope, not destruction. Jonah keeps going on here. Uh, but Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish 
from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship there going to Tarshish. Now, uh, let's do two things here. Um, first off, um, Joppa, he went down. It doesn't mean that he went down on the map, right? He didn't go from north to south. That's not how it works. Uh, Joppa is just lower in region. You think about it in elevation level. So he's just going down in the elevation uh, to get to the sea. Uh, Tarshish, well, there's a couple locations. The one I like is in Spain. And the reason I like it in Spain is, um, oh, I'm going to flip around. Give me a second here. I got to make sure my map's right. Okay, so you got Israel here, over here is Nineveh and Tarshish would be as far away as they could get. I mean, it, if you think about it, it's, it's on the, the coast of Spain uh, out towards the Atlantic. It's the farthest region that they knew of to get away from where God wanted them to go. He's going to the very, very edge of the universe that they knew of at that time. He, they were trying to get away. I mean, the Americas aren't understood at this point. So this is as far west as he can go. And that's where he wants to go. So he pays a fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish. I highlight this because... He intentionally runs away. It's not like he got kidnapped. It wasn't like he got a free ride. He takes out his pocketbook and intentionally wants to run away from God's message. He doesn't like the message of grace. And he does so to get away from the presence of the Lord. Now, I would hope that Jonah knew better that he wasn't going to run away from God. But he did it anyways. How often do we run away from the presence of the Lord? How often do we run away from His grace and His mercy? As I was thinking about it, uh, you know, I kind of was convicted. How often do I not want to stand up and talk to somebody about God's mercy? I'm more interested in myself or uh, I can't associate with those kind of people because I might be looked down upon. We struggle with it or how often... Uh, I won't ask you to raise your hand, but my guess is most of us are pretty good at holding grudges. How often are we more like to hold on to that problem? Man, I can forgive everybody, but God, do not forgive that person right there. If you know what they did to me, just no, don't even, right? I want them to suffer. Don't give them that grace. Don't we do that? And what about you? When God's message of mercy and grace comes to you, how often do we run away from it? I remember uh, back in, uh, I was in college, we were going to visit people in prison. And some of these, uh, we were doing some prison ministry, talking with some people and the theme that kept coming over and over again was, how can God uh, love me for what I did? They just couldn't get past what they did. I've met people on, um, you know, towards the end of their life, and we're talking, and there's still that one sin they just, that eats away at them. My guess is each and every one of us have that one sin that just, well, it just kind of bites at us. 
Do you hear that message of mercy? Or do you hear that message of destruction? Do you embrace God's mercy? Or do you run from it? I want you to hear something. Uh, and it'll play out through the next couple of weeks. You can't run away from God's grace. He'll find you. Those things that you are struggling with right now, those things that eat away at you, those things that you hold on to, he's going to find you. God's grace and mercy is for you. You're forgiven. It's free. It's a message of hope. And it's for you. You can't run away. God is bigger. God is stronger. He finds you. Jonah's story is a story of grace and mercy. It's a mercy story for Nineveh. It's a mercy story for Jonah. And it's a mercy story for you. God's grace is for us. The despicable people who get our mercy in Christ. The word of the Lord that came to us to forgive our sin. Amen. Now may the grace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until he comes again. Amen.